Making regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, sellers of high quality precision sewing machines. And by Hamilton Beach, makers of quality home and commercial appliances. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge. I'm pleased to announce that this is actually our season two uh, Making Regalia. Um, season one went very well and got a lot of good response and you know I appreciate all the requests that came in. Uh, we're gonna continue on bringing these shows to you and today we're actually going to do uh, leather work today. Um, I'm going to be working on a belt. Uh, I'm going to show you the different steps on how to tan it, uh, go through the different cutting of it, and also uh, tacking on um, uh, rivets to it. So, but you know, once again, I want to uh, reach out to you guys. Thank everyone out there in TV land uh, for watching our show. Um, you know, thanks for the response and you know the emails and everything. Uh, I appreciate it. I really look at it that you know this helps me out and continuing on with this show. Um, so we're going to continue on for season two, bringing you more stuff, more things, uh, more you know outfit building. Uh, start maybe do some bustle work and um, go with that. So what we're going to be working on today, uh, this is my daughter's belt. Uh, my daughter dances Fancy Shaw. She also dances uh, 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 Jingle. Um, you know, I use this belt because it's very universal. She can wear it with both styles of outfits. And um, it's pretty cool, you know. And not for say, I'm not the expert uh, on how actually how to make these. You know, I, I don't. I've seen some belts out there that blow my mind. Um, the actual articulate work that they do um, supersedes me altogether. I just know a little bit of basics on how to do this and you know how to get this um, ready. So you know, um, bear with me on this. I'm just going to show you my style and um, my my interpretation on how to do this. And uh, I know out there there are some uh, artists that do these belts. Uh, it can blow me away. You know, I appreciate that. You know, I'm not saying I'm better than you guys. It's just I'm just showing like people how to do this. So, working with this, uh, you know, this is uh, rawhide leather. Uh, you can get this at most uh, um, leather stores, and pretty much it's very easy to work with. Um, all I've done is you know took my daughter's measurements and um, cut it out to her specific uh, specific measurements. From there, you know, I added these uh, these um, gold conchos and actually these gold uh, um, uh, um, tacks, and that's what we're going to get into. But from the very basis of this, I'm going to show you how to cut this out using, you know, like uh, just our uh, bare tools here, and then we're going to dye it. Now, dyeing it, it's going to get a little bit of messy, you know, so you want to get uh, prepared for that. You want to actually use trash bags or use an old table that you don't really use or eat off of because uh, the dye gets everywhere and, you know, it's, it's very dark and, and as you can kind of see from my hands, uh, the, it doesn't come out for a couple days. So uh, just bear in mind with that, just be very careful with it. Um, there's actually two steps to, to apply it, let it dry, and then after that you actually have to rub it, uh, the, the dye off of it. The dye will stay, but it's just to get all the, the excess dye off there. Now understand that the first time you might use the belt, uh, after you've dyed it, it might get on the outfit that you're wearing. Um, it it kind of tends to do that. I, I've known that for the past. So the first time you do wear the belt after you dye it, don't use your most expensive material. Use maybe an outfit that you know you you've worn in the past, and but don't use your latest and greatest outfit on a brand new belt. That's all I'm saying. So with that, we're going to go through the steps on actually how to build this belt. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our leather that we purchased at our leather shop, um, our rawhide leather. Um, you know, this comes in different sizes. You're just going to have to um, tune to whatever measurements you need. You know, um, this, you know, like I said, this belt, uh, I actually wear one of these, uh, these kind of belts too. So this is kind of unisex. You know, you can actually wear one for the male or female. It's just whatever you want to do with it, you know, add whatever tax you want to do. Or, you know, if you can create your own designs or, you know, actually put uh, family designs, um, the tax allow you to kind of put a little bit of extra into it. Um, but starting with the leather, you know, this is pretty stout material. Um, Pretty much, I've already got my measurements here, but I'm just going to use this as a demonstration on actually how to cut it and actually how to dye. Um, what you do is just, you know, just use a regular pencil, and if I were to measure out whatever length I need, you know, just measure there, and then you know, just run up here. 
Um, leather's pretty good about using a racing uh, your eraser, but you know you just want to make your mark there. Take your scissors. Um, it is kind of hard to cut through, depending on the thickness of the leather. So what I like to use is pretty sharp material, and you know, like you women out there that you know don't have a lot of hand strength, you might ask someone else to cut this because even for me, it's about to break my scissors. So <laughs> here we go. There we go. I think I got to go to the gym on this one. All right, it's getting through. Ah, I got it. Okay, so finally got through there. It might be a little rough on some sides, and you can take sandpaper to actually sand the edges um, if you wanted to make, you know, rounded edges or things. Um, I've even seen people actually sand the, uh, this side to get the, the kind of roughness off there and make it smooth. Uh, depending on the grade of sand, you know, uh, uh, you know, that will determine, you know, like actually how smooth it can get. Um, now, um, I've already got this table kind of prepped up, ready to go. Uh, this die, like I said, gets just about um, on anything, and once it's on there, it's on there. Uh, it's um, U.S. Marine Corps black. Um, I remember back in the Marines, this is actually what we used to dye like our, our boots with. Uh, I remember the old Cadillacs. Uh, I actually had a pair when I first went into the Marines, and what we did is we uh, actually used this die to actually uh, um, dye them over again, and then we'd stay up all night polishing them. Uh, this dye, um, you know, it made them glossy, and I, I remember like going through inspections, like some of our boots uh, looked pure like glass and stuff. So, um, but it took a long time to get there. So I'm pretty familiar with this, uh, with this dye from the U.S. Marine Corps. Um, this is pretty easy. What you'll do is uh, you'll buy this, but you also have to buy. Um, it's, it's it looks like a huge Q-tip, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my fingers dirty for you guys out there at home. Um, this isn't really going to come off too very well, but for you guys, and, and you know, I love you guys out there, I'm going to actually get my fingers all dirty for you. Here we go. So, there it is. There's my black Q-tip. So, what you want to do is very carefully take this out and just go ahead and go to the, um, the leather, you know, like whatever like stroke you want. You can see it's already starting to get in there really well. So just run it over, kind of just in a, like a, any way possible to get it on there. And it just starts to soak in very well. Now you see it, it, it kind of looks wet and then all of a sudden it, it looks like it's, it's dry. It's not. It is still wet. So it might take a little bit of time to actually uh, let it dry. And what I like to do is I like to do this several coats. Uh, when I do my belts and stuff, I'll do like at least three coats. Because once you like let it sit the first coat like this, um, let it sit for a while, it looks like uh, it's flat black for a quick second. But once it actually starts to die, um, it, it starts to get a lighter in tone. And that's when you know it's starting to, uh, you know, to dry up. But right when it starts to do that, I like to hit it with one more coat. And I'll do this like, you know, three to four times depending on what I'm working with and you know just that way I know it's not going to come off and it's going to be a dark good finish on there because that's what I'm shooting for is you know just a really really good finish so if you look you know it doesn't take long at all it's starting starting to change uh, color tone I'm going to go over, uh, go ahead and hit it again with another light coat so here we go we're just adding the other coat it starts, uh, this is actually pretty fun actually. I, I, I have to say, I like doing this. You can see it's starting to get a little bit darker when it dries up. And once, you know, once I let it dry um, from here, what I'll do is I'll hit the sides of it and that way I kind of edge it on the sides. But as you see, it's starting to, it takes a little bit, a little bit longer to dry. And right now it looks like gloss black. But in a couple seconds, it starts to change color. It starts to go flat black. Um, when I do this, uh, I'll usually let it sit for a night. Uh, once I've done all my uh, all my um, all my layers, I'll let it sit for a night. And then from here, what I'll do is I'll, I'll get an old, dirty sock that you know you don't really want to use anymore, 
And what I'm going to try to do is get all the excess off. It, it will kind of look a little uh, flat blackish uh, when, the next morning. But what you'll do is you'll just take your sock and run over it uh, a lot. And it'll start to flake and stuff like that. So I, 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 I recommend you don't do this on your couch or anywhere close to anything that you want damaged because the flakes will you know, tend to stay somewhere. So either take it outside and kind of like rub it, uh, rub uh, the flat blackness out of it, and it'll start to actually uh, polish itself. All right, with the power of television, you know, I let this sit for a little bit, like you know we always do. Um, I got one of Red Sky's socks here. Um, you know, he left it over at the house. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to rub the leather and you can kind of see it's starting to change color and like I said you don't want to do this on your on your couch or anything close to anything you don't want to ruin because it starts to flake off but the more I do this it, the more polished it gets and there we go you can kind of see it's starting to get a little glossy and like I said, there are products out there that if you want to go to the leather store and you want really got to, got, want it to shine, um, you can buy you know conditioners and stuff like that. And you know, but for the show, I got it close enough where you know I'm going to work with this. And like I said, I'm going to start doing these tacks right here. Um, these tacks I, I get from just about you know any Indian store. Uh, they come in all different sizes. They also come in silver, and sometimes they come with you know designs on them and stuff. They're pretty easy to work with. They actually come with two prongs or, you know, I've seen them with different other styles of prongs. But what I want to do is, you know, I'm going to start doing design work. And usually what I'll do um, on the bottom is I'll, I'll do like every inch. I'll just uh, drop a tack here, 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 here. Um, the best way I can do that is even with, you know, the black on there, I'll take my ruler and, you know, just kind of pencil in a mark or a little indention um, using, you know, like a blade or something like that. Get a little cut mark on there. Now, what I'll do here is I'm going to use one, um, one of these tacks, but I'm going, to, I'm going to actually cut the prongs halfway off. And that's going to be my, my marker tack. And I'm going to use this over and over and over. That way I can precisely see where I want my tack to go. So all I'm going to do is take some needle nose, cut like uh, the prong enough that it's just going to like... It, barely protrude out, but I can still make an indention into a leather. So I'll rub it back and forth there. And if you see the prong isn't all the way, isn't all the way there, but it still will sit perfectly exactly where I want it. So from here, I use this to make my designs. And the way I do it is I kind of will figure out where I want it. Sorry, I don't have a hammer today. But there. Now if you look, this, uh, the, the sawed off prong that we have actually made two little like bite marks in there. Uh, these little vampire marks are perfect because all you got to do now is take an awl or um, any kind of like knife or um, any small like, um, like a blade and actually make indentions in here. From there it's very easy just to slide this in there and um, uh, collapse the, end of the, the, the ends of these and then the tack will sit perfectly in there. So, since I've got my little vampire marks in there, um, and I don't have an awl, and I don't have a hammer, but I do have this, I'm going to use this. I'm going to be very careful with this. It's probably not a project to have your kids do. Um, I'm a local idiot, so I can just do this. So, here we go. I'm just going to use this carpenter's knife. Kind of get in there. And this leather is thick. This one is a little too thick. So going back and forth, I got my bite marks in there. I'm going to take this and push it through. So now I'm going to show you how to do the design work on this belt that I've already started. Um, this is the kind of the design I'm going to go with. I'm going to do it repeatedly here, 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 and here. Um, so um, what we did earlier is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take my little vampire, uh, my little vampire like tack, bend this in, 
and I'm going to do the exact uh, same design as here. So all I've got to do is put it right above the other one. And I like to eyeball things and make it just perfect. So you can move it back and forth before you can actually put it in. And then from there, just kind of mash it in there. I got my vampire marks good enough that I can see them. And all I've got to do with my X-Acto knife is just kind of prick it in there. There. And then use your regular tack and push this in. Do it again. This leather is a little tough too. And so like, like I said, you know, I've seen belts out there in the power world that are just freaking awesome. I mean, I've seen like design work that I, I can't even imagine how long it's taken them to actually put all these tacks in there. You know, if you can see, you know, even me, it's a kind of a struggle to put these in there. And I give a lot of kudos out to the people that do these, uh, these belts, because this has got to take a lot of time, a lot of man hours. And technically, I, I usually use an awl, but I left it at home on accident. So I'm trying to work with this with this um, carpenter's knife. This is not something that I really would recommend. Plus, it's a little dangerous, I think. Joaquin is hoping that bloodshed won't ruin his project. Play it safe. Use the right tools for puncturing leather. An awl and a dead blow mallet will safely do the job. It's starting to protrude through. I think I got it. So I'm going to use the leather. Oh, your neighbor's going to love you when you start like, banging on the walls and on the tables and stuff. And so I've got the actual prongs to protrude through the leather finally, finally. And now all you got to do is bend them over to fasten them. So once you collapse them, they're pretty much in there and they're not coming out. All you got to do, there. There, I've done both sides and that is perfectly in there. And from there, you just take your little vampire attack and just keep going. Uh, from here I went four up and then I went two on the sides to kind of make a little cross symbol. So I'm going to do that over and over and over. And you know, like I said, I've seen other designs where people actually put family designs, um, real intricate stuff. And um, right now this is all I've got for right now. So, and um, these conchos here, I've actually got these at um, the, your actual Indian store too. All I did is uh, just measure these out. You know, I found the dead center where I wanted it to. Um, so, and I just cut and drilled a hole through here. And the concho actually has a little uh, coupling hole in here, into it, a little ring. And what I did is I ran shoestring through here, attaching them through the little hoop. And this is like a, um, a nylon shoestring. And so what I did is I tied a really good knot and I burnt the edges of it so these won't actually pop off. So that's all I did to actually get my uh, conchos on there. From there, you know, since this is my daughter's little belt, I know she's going to grow out of it really fast. I didn't really go with the intricate details as far as she's doing the straps. Uh, on my belt, since, you know, I've gotten, you know, since I'm older and I haven't really changed any sizes, um, I've gone with leather straps, which you can also buy at most leather shops. Uh, they have kind of instructions on how to uh, um, actually bolt these on there. Uh, it usually requires like a screwdriver and um, um, a little interlocking device. And sometimes you put a little thread lock on there so the bolt won't come off. That's just uh, what I remember. Because um, I have had the, the screw actually come out before. So I, I like to throw, put a little thread lock in there so it won't ever come out. But, you know, since this is my daughter uh, and I know she's going to grow out kind of fast, all I did was, you know, drill two holes here, here, here. And um, the way she attaches it is just by shoestring. So forgive me on that one. I, I didn't uh, do the straps on here. But, you know, there are instructions when you do buy the kits itself. And so what I'm doing is lining this next one up, you know, just right on top of the other one. I, I kind of eyeball it, make sure I got it dead center where I want. Use my makeshift hammer here and beat the heck out of it. And looks like I got my marks. So, like I said, you know, I want to apologize because I don't have an awl. If I had an awl, I could probably go a whole lot faster, but... Today on the show, I totally forgot to bring it. So I got this carpenter knife, which is kind of dangerous and I don't recommend it. So um, 
Once again, you know, like it, it'd be a whole lot easier if you had an all. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, um, uh, taking care of this, uh, the, this brass um, conchos and um, the tax itself. Uh, they're products that, you know, you can even buy at, you know, your local, like, uh, convenience store. I mean, well, I'll we'll just say at Walmart. Um, it's called Neverdoll. Neverdoll is uh, pretty easy to use. It's a, a solution that you, um, you want to use a rag, maybe an old towel or something to that, to that effect. Um, just all you got to do is put it on there. Uh, rub the Neverdoll over here, and it starts to polish this again. So even though this one uh, looks a little dingy, it looks a little uh, faded out, the Never Doll will actually uh, get it back to showroom shine. Uh, I've seen these things really, really bright as soon as you start to hit it with the Never Doll. Um, so that's one thing you can use to uh, take care of your belt with. Like I said, you know, all I did was, you know, with my vampire marks, you know, just try to get all the way through the leather. Going back and forth, get my tacks, and tack this thing down. I'm gonna he-man it through, and whoops, I ended up breaking the. I ended up breaking that one. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know my own strength. <laughs> okay. So since I'm doing it the unsafe way, I really gotta he-man that thing on there. And good. Looks like I got it to protrude through. Once there, all I gotta do is, you know, like I said, just um, make sure that blade's in there. I'm going to push the ends down. And once I do that, the tack is in there permanently and you don't have to worry about it falling off. Ugh. There. That's number two. <laughs> like I said, you know, it would have been a whole lot faster if I had it all, but you know, like showing you the basics on how to do this is pretty much the easiest way to do it. Um, like I said, this is gonna save you a lot of time. Uh, this little um, tack that, you know, I've cut off the ends. Um, now you might wanna watch it sometimes, whoops, uh, that the ends will actually start to bow out. Uh, when it does that, all you gotta do is carefully kind of bend them back in, cause that's gonna mess up your alignment when you actually do your tacks. Uh, your actual individual tacks. So um, if they start to bow out, you know, just kind of compress them back in and, you know, that way you can continue to use it. Now, this isn't going to last you the entire duration. You know, you're going to have to make another one of these because uh, after a while it does just tend to wear these out and, you know, just throw it away and start fresh. So uh, just know that, you know, this won't make it through the whole job. But at least, you know, you get most of the job and you can precisely pinpoint exactly where you want to tack this down to. So I got a lot of requests in to show how to um, fuse two uh, pieces of material together and hide uh, the, the rough part, you know, the actual frayed part, um, the, the cut marks, I, I would probably say. Um, it's very easy. Um, what I'm going to work with is two pieces of cotton material, um, knowing that, you know, if you leave this frayed mark out, you know, it's going to fray pretty well. So I'm going to fuse these together. I'm going to use our Brand new sewing machine from Bernina of Oklahoma. I want to thank them out, you know, for, uh, you know, letting us use this. Uh, I'm going to steal it by the end of the show. Just kidding. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pieces of cotton material and um, what we're going to do is uh, take the prints, both sides of the prints, and smash them together just like so. So from there, you take your prints together and the way that you're going to hide the, 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 the frayed part is you're just going to roll it. Roll it once, and you make kind of like a um, um, little indention there. And then from there, you're going to roll it twice. This, it's, it's going to be double lapped, you know, pretty much four times over. So you're actually uh, going to be sewing through four pieces of material. I like to keep my fingers on it. Some people use pins to hold this in place. Uh, me, I just, uh, uh, for, you know, structural purposes only, I'm just going to hold it together. So I'm going to slide this in the machine. Uh, another way you can actually get this perfectly perfect is uh, uh, iron it. If you iron the material, uh, it'll stay perfectly flat. So, find my pedal. All I'm going to do is run a si uh, single stitch all the way up. And I'm going to sew, if you can kind of see it, I'm going to sew right where the fold is um, on the very outside. That way I know I've got all the, the frayed edges in there and you're never going to see them again. Oh, 
Wow, I am liking this sewing machine. Okay, so there, if you can see it, I sewed right here on, on this inside, and you're never going to see these frayed edges again. Um, and when you flip it inside, like how it's supposed to be, you won't see it. And once again, you know, I always recommend that, you know, whatever uh, fabric you're working with, I kind of go with the same color of thread. So even if, if you pull this thread apart, you know, you're not going to see like, you know, like say if it was a red or, you know, anything orange or anything like that. Since I use the blue, even if I pull this as hard as you can, you, all it's going to do is it's going to match the same print. So that's my little tip for today. You know, that's how you um, fuse two pieces of material uh, together and hide the frayed part. So once again, you know, um, going back to the belt, you know, um, I just want to uh, state that uh, depending on what uh, style of dance it is, if you're a you know a grown man or you know a woman or whatnot, uh, you know, kind of pick out what kind of like belt like fits your needs. Um, this one right here, this material is kind of really really thick. Um, preferably, if this was you know my belt, I wouldn't have probably got so thick. Um, the other thing you got to worry about is uh, your tax. You want to make sure that the tax that you get will uh, go all the way through uh, the leather itself. Sometimes you know if you can get like uh, too thick of uh, leather, uh, your tax won't actually protrude through there. Then you won't be able to clamp them. Um, you know, like I said, you can get this at most leather shops, um, and you, they have workers there that would help you out with different sizes and stuff. And as, as far as thickness too, um, I know like uh, Tandy's, uh, that's where you can get most of this uh, leather stuff. You can even buy the the cup links and uh, the um, straps for um, the uh, to cinch uh, the belt together. So just keep in mind, watch your sizes, um, you know, check out your dyes, and you know, if you want to make them shiny, uh, I know there's other products out there that can, uh, you can actually use on the leather itself. So once again, we have come to the conclusion of our show, and I'm really sad, but really happy that, you know, we're going to continue on with this show, and um, you know, I want to thank everybody out there for watching and tuning in, you know, giving them great uh, advice. Of course, you know, you can email me at LoneLodgeCATV47 at Yahoo.com. You can watch all the past uh, episodes at um, CATV47.com, Making Regalia. You can watch all of Season 1 there. And now we're bringing you Season 2. Uh, season 2, you know, we're going to encompass a lot more stuff. We're going to have a couple more guest appearances. I believe my grandmother is actually going to come up here and do a whole set of um, um, fully beaded um, um, moccasins. So she's going to do uh, the whole setup. You can learn uh, how to uh, cut the sole, uh, to beat it, and actually attach everything. And plus, you know, we're going to have some more guest appearances from different people out there. So once again, from, from me, thank you uh, for tuning in to Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge. <laughs>